Hello guys, today we're talking about the Marvels box office here. Okay, the Marvels is doing so badly at the box office. Okay, it is just as bad as we predicted. I remember I said in like March that this movie could actually do well. Okay, there's a possibility that this movie might become a quote unquote super hit. But those entire things went to as the box office progressed throughout the year, everyone always said, you know what? Superhero movies are failing. Aquaman, also a sequel to a billion dollar movie, is also failing as well. It really shows you that it's not a good thing to lose your entire audience. Okay? They are talking about fatigue and stuff. You know, oh, there's just fatigue. There's too many Star Wars movies, too many Marvel movies. There was fatigue with all these movies. But... They didn't have any problems in 2013, 2018, or 2019. It's really only the post-pandemic movies that Marvel is struggling with. Marvel is having problems with. Okay, so the Marvel's Eyes Record Row MCU opening. Okay, and they'll tell you that it's all because of Netflix. It's all because of streaming. No, it's not because of streaming. It's because you lost your entire audience. Okay. The Disney Plus stores are doing horribly. And Disney is doing so bad, in fact, that they had to do A. All of the movies. Again. All the MCU movies. And some other movies. Yeah, a company that's doing so well. That they're doing the movies because they don't know if the movies can make money. Avatar wasn't delayed, but all the movies were delayed. <laughs> okay. All the major movies were delayed. Okay. That shows you a company that's in disarray. Okay, a company that is doing horribly. Okay. And considering that all these movies will probably be woke. Complete piles of garbage that nobody wants to see. We're going to be seeing more Marvels and Dial of Destinies and the Real Mermaids in the future. Okay. Not even IMDb it could protect this movie. The average score for the movie is around 6.1. Which is awful for this movie. Okay, the average score. It's 6.1. The average Google score is 56%. And the average Rotten Tomato score is 62%. If only the first movie wasn't as protected as much as the of this movie. If this movie was only as protected as the same amount as the first Marvel's movie. Okay? I wonder how much it would change. If this movie wasn't as protected. If the first movie, kind of like The Last Jedi. Okay, the first Captain Marvel movie... Rotten Tomatoes did everything they can to protect this movie. Same thing with IMDb, same thing with Letterboxd. They all went to go protect the first Captain Marvel movie. But even they realized that we can't protect these garbage movies for much longer. Okay? The Marvels has a 6.1 on IMDb and 62%. I can't wait for the review bombing, sexism, and racism to come about. Because people don't like this movie. Okay? The whole thing of quote unquote review bombing was a term that was created by people who were angry that people didn't like the Ghostbusters movie. Okay? And they're still angry at the new Ghostbusters movie because the new Ghostbusters movie was still not contained anything or any references to the 2016 Ghostbusters movie. Because it should be forgotten. That movie should be forgotten. It's awful. It's garbage. It's trash. Okay? It's one of the worst blockbuster movies ever made. Okay? I'm not talking about, like, you know, movies like Finding Jesus or, you know, Philosopher Past. I'm talking about actual real movies. Okay? So, the Marvels is doing... Let's compare it to other movies at the box office. Okay? So, we have the Marvels here. The Incredible Hulk. Okay? Eternals. Black Widow and Saint Seed. Okay? We can include the first four or the first Captain America. Okay. As well. But what's adjusted for inflation? What's adjusted for inflation? So the first Hulk movie opened the 41 million adjusted for inflation in the first four movie. If it opened today, we have opened to 33 million. Okay. We can exclude the Eternals and add in the first Captain America movie as well.
Which I think is the first Avenger. Okay, adjusted for a face in that movie, which is often one of the biggest... It's often like one of the worst grossing Marvel movies because it didn't really make that much money. But adjusted for inflation, okay, and they're using the $234 million figure, not the one using the tax subsidies from the UK. We're using the, num- we're using the numbers including the tax subsidies from the UK, the numbers from that one. But the first Avenger opened the $34 million. Okay, Black Widow is actually the highest grossing of these movies, these and it opened the forty million dollars. Okay. Yeah. And that's of course adjusted for inflation, which didn't really move all too much. But movies like the four and Incredible Hulk and First Avengers, okay, did much better than the Marvels. Okay. Which makes the Marvels the world's grossing Marvel movie in history. Okay. It's not the world's grossing superhero movie, obviously, but it's world's grossing the MCU. We're using the MCU, not using just if we're using Marvel, it'd still beat out Howard the Duck, which isn't really a milestone in anything. Okay, it really is no milestone because Howard the Duck was a pile of just awfulness. Okay, but the Marvel is doing this badly at the box office. Okay, and it probably won't have any legs at the box office. But now let's use some more recent exa- more recent movies as examples, okay? To have a scope of how bad this movie really doing, okay? So remember I said that there was a hard, hard, huge possibility that Five Nights at Freddy's or how gross the Marvels? Well, here you go. This is the first day of the FNAF movie, $39 million, and the Marvels, $21 million. There's a possibility that the Marvels might be a sink even lower. And might not even hit 40 million. It probably will hit 40 million, but there's a possibility this movie opens like Sazam View of the Gods. Okay. It has horrible legs. Okay. Which it probably won't only open to 40 million, but that movie had awful legs. Okay. That movie had horrible legs. Like FNAF is having right now. Okay. A movie that is mostly just front loaded in its opening. Okay. But the difference between this these two movies, okay. We can also add in uh the Transformers movie. Okay. But it's also had very similar ways to the FNAF movie. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But here we go. The Marvels. First day is doing worse than Transformers Rise of the Beasts. Okay. And that was also mostly a front loaded weekend. Um, it, but it, actually, Transformers, they had more of a legs. Okay. There was a possibility the Marvels might actually have some legs and make $50 million. Okay. It's very unlikely considering the fact that there's empty feeders for this movie. Okay. And that nobody is going to see this movie. Okay. It always shows you that Marvel has fallen, okay? It always shows you that Marvel has fallen. That's what we've always showing us. That yes, the MCU has fallen, okay? And, and of course, it couldn't be a much better movie to see it fall, okay? Marvel had struggled in its post-pandemic box office, okay? And people say there's, there's superhero fatigue, okay? The only reason there's so-called superhero fatigue is because Marvel released three very bad movies last year. Wakanda Forever, Love and Thunder, and Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness. Quantumania was also really bad, and the Marvels is really bad, which hurts the Marvel brand, hurts the MCU brand, okay? And all these new characters are trying to introduce, well, I don't think anyone's going to care about these new characters, because the MCU is a very tarnished brand like Star Wars now, okay? Tra- it, okay, Transformers, okay, had two... Or three really bad movies. Okay. The MCU had three really bad movies released in one year. Followed by the next. Followed by the previous year having. Uh, one really great movie. Uh, a good movie. A mediocre movie. And a bad movie. Which. They released four movies in a year. Which is you know. Probably a big problem. Okay. But then the year afterwards. We have one really great movie. And two just complete piles of set. 
Okay, eventually, people are not going to watch this stuff anymore. Okay, it's just that simple. People are not going to watch this stuff anymore. Okay, as well. Okay, so this movie is doing horribly compared to more recent movies. And I haven't really done the comparison of the box office in a while. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but maybe I should start doing it more. But yeah, the Marvels is doing horribly at the box office as expected. Brie Watson has yet another failure on her hand of 2023. And it adds to the, the amount of failures by the Walt Disney Corporation of this year. Okay. Okay, so we have 2023 movies. Okay, well, Disney only had 70% of the market sale for this year. Okay, here. Yeah. Okay, all of Disney's movies made the movies except for one. All of Disney's movies released this year. Have flopped except for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Okay. That is the only successful movie Disney produced this year. Quantumania was a failure. Okay. All Fox's movies released this year was a failure. No, we're not counting Avatar Way of the Water. Because that released in 2022. Okay. That released in 2022. We can't count 2022 releases at all. For this year's successes and failures at the box office. Okay. Because that was a 2022 movie. Not a 2023 movie. Okay, even though a lot of its box office came from this year, it still was a last year movie. Okay, we can go to a uh, Little Mermaid flop, Dial Destiny flop, Dial Destiny was a failure, uh, Haunted Mansion was a failure, it got beat out by Barbie at the box office, and The Marvels was a failure, and Elemental was a failure. Okay, Elemental, that was kind of a wasp, but either way, Elemental still was a failure for Pixar standards. A company that used to produce massive successful movies that would have amazing ratings at the box office because people would come back and see these movies over and over again and, and the word of mouth would help the movie at the box office. But no, but there was no interest in Elemental. Okay? That the movie basically lost money. Okay? And now the Marvels is joining the rest of movies that Disney produced this year that are failing. That are flopping. Now let's look at other studios. Mario Movie and Barbie. Okay, two huge movies that released this year. Okay, made more money than Dis than all the Disney movies. Oppenheimer, one of the biggest successful movies of the year, and also the highest grossing movie that never hit number one at the box office because also Barbie came out as well. And Barbie, and basically a lot of people double dipped for both movies as well. We can go further into this year, we can go to more minor successes like Creed 3, Scream 6, and Zombie Chapter 4. All three of these movies making a large chunk of money at the box office. Okay. As well. Spider-Man Across the Spider-Force, of course, doing really well at the box office. There's in horror movies doing as well as Everwick the Nun 2, Megan, and Insidious the Rat Red Door as well. Okay. And yes, he did have some big failures, like Mission Impossible directing part, part 1. It was mostly because the IMAX fears were stolen from that movie as well for, for Oppenheimer's success. So basically, Mission Impossible flopped because of Oppenheimer and Barbie. You know, they sort of released the movie way earlier, like on that dead weekend, when instead of having, instead of having nothing besides like some movie about some girls, some couple come out. It called us a least person powerful den, which will have also continued to hurt Dial Destiny at the box office. Some in some non franchise movies did pretty well, like Oppenheimer and The Sound of Freedom. And the Taylor of Sith movie made a lot of money. And of course, the FNAF movie made a lot of money at the box office. This it actually was profitable, despite the Warrant Mail's really well Warrant Mail score. Okay, as well. Okay, so. Only Disney is the one that's really failing here. Okay, Disney the only one really failing. Yes, Transformers, The Flash, and Mission Impossible and Fast X all lost money. Okay, but almost all of those movies fought because of how expensive they were. Okay, spending $200 million, $300 million in every movie is not a good thing. Okay, and The Flash was going to flop either way if it had a small or large budget. Transformers, they usually have a large budget. 
Fast at Fast and the Furious usually have a you know large budget, but not as high as Fast X. Say if it's impossible. Mission Pos they really thought that Mission Possible Dead Reckoning Part One would recreate Top Top Gun's success and it did not. Okay? It just performed like your average Mission Possible movie. It did, really did just perform like a Mission Possible movie usually did. It still didn't make any money at the box office, but you can really see here. Yeah. But it will still probably make more money. In the Marvels. And also Miss Possible for Red Rocky Part 1 also underperformed in China as well. And did do as well internationally as many of have hoped as well. So that's it, but and of course underperformed domestically compared to Top Guns. Massive success at the box office. Goodbye.